More of the Zach Geltz Show on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. All right, welcome back in. Zach Gelb Show, Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. 518 is the time in the Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios. Just once again, a friendly reminder, if you're not in front of a television this weekend, you could listen to the games right here on Fox Sports 920, The Jersey. Final four games on Saturday and the national championship game on Monday. And someone that's out west right now is the head coach of St. Joe's. Getting ready to see some of these games this weekend is Phil Martelli, who's kind enough to hop on board with us. Coach, we always appreciate it, and how are you? I'm doing great. Walking down the street to get to my next meeting, which is at uh, 5.30 your time. But a lot going on here in Phoenix. There's a lot of people and a, a lot of excitement. And if I had to if I had to pick the school that's best represented, it would be Carolina. <laughs> which one? Oh, <laughs> uh, North. That's a good question. Yeah. North, North Carolina is, uh, is everywhere. Yeah, well, it's raining kinda, here in Philly today, so we're very jealous that. of the weather. I heard that the people here in Phoenix are a little bit upset because it's a a little overcast, but man, is it warm. (laughs) I'm very jealous of you as coach Martelli's with us right now on the Zach Gelb show. Hey coach, last year you played that Oregon team in the NCAA tournament. And we all know how good of a coach Dana Altman is Uh, when he loses Boucher right before the start of the NCAA tournament. Not a lot of people thought they'd be in this spot. Just what did you see out of that coach and the job that he's done to get his team here with the adjusting to adversity? Well, first of all, you make a really, really strong point about it. he's a magnificent coach. The whole country doesn't know because he's, you know, was at Creighton in the middle of the country and then goes to the West Coast and late games. And when we think Pac-10, Pac-12, Pac whatever it is now, we think Arizona and UCLA. Uh, he's a brilliant offensive mind. We prepared last year best we could. We just couldn't hold them off. And uh, I like their size. At all those, all the positions, uh, the kid Ennis, who was in Philadelphia, the the, uh, the 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 trail player, uh, Dorsey, Bell's performance, they have they have tremendous tremendous size. But I think for one of the few times they're going to be they're they're going to be matched against a Carolina team that is dedicated to banging the ball into the lane. Uh, that's going to cause a little bit of a problem for them. And, Coach, when I watch that Oregon team play, and, and, and all these teams that are here, we don't know you got to be a good team to get to this point of the season, but everyone breaks it down this week of experience versus unexperienced, three coaches that haven't been to a Final Four against one that has been to nine of them. And, and all three of those coaches that haven't been there, they've had a lot of good runs. Oregon has been a team that's been in the last five NCAA tournament appearances. How much do you factor in that experience that North Carolina has this weekend? Well, Zach, you know what I, you know where I factor it in. Uh, I think they're magnificent teams. They're extraordinarily well coached. However, here's my wrinkle: uh, they're going to play in front of seventy-five thousand people. So South Carolina spent some games this year seventy-five hundred. Gonzaga, it's usual seventy-five hundred, uh, eight thousand people. Seventy-five thousand people. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how you prepare. It has to have an impact. Carolina's been there, done that. Last year, they have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because of the Chris Jenkins shot. Um, It's a big factor. But it's the size of the crowds, to me, that is the factor. I think it's a great point. And also, when you look at North Carolina, there's still a little bit of an unknown with that team. I like them to win the whole thing because of that redemption factor of being so close a year ago. Right. But now they had that injury to Joel Berry, and you know he's going to play in the game. But the question is, how effective will he be? Uh, there's no question that that is that is uh, a really, really big deal because at this point in the year, you have to be whole. And uh, Joel Barry is a big part of them being whole. Um, you know, he's going to play, but is he going to be efficient enough to run that offense? And then let's get to a little bit of the, the South Carolina story because the story of Frank Martin, it's just such a fun one. He was a bouncer, then an assistant high school coach, a high school coach, and you know what it's like to be a high school coach. Then he gets that job and then takes another job at South Carolina. That story right now and the run that his team has been on It makes it so fun because no one, just like Oregon, and I know Oregon had a better regular season, but because of the injury, no one thought South Carolina would be here in this spot. 
Well, the other thing about Frank Martin is uh, his team is an extension of him. You know, so when you when you look at, at their his personality, kind of like rough and tumble and uh, big bear of a guy, the same is true of his team, and that's the reason that they they've been suc- uh, successful. You know, I, I think coaches here would be split. They would be really pulling for Frank Martin, and they would really be pulling for uh, Mark Few. Not that the other guys are chopped liver, obviously, but there's something special about the path that Mark Few and Frank Martin have taken. And Mark Few has been at Gonzaga, it seems like, forever now. And, and now he gets that opportunity of going to the Final Four. And you know what it's like to be a part of one of those teams that had a chance at perfection. And your St. Joe's team lost in that conference tournament and then eventually in the NCAA tournament. Do you think that loss uh, against BYU uh, or, uh, back in February, end of February, actually helped Mark Few's team just to get that pressure and you know out of the room of that undefeated talk? I've never been a fan of that, to be honest with you, Zach. I think that if you if you think losing helps, then you're asking your coach to kind of throw a game. Uh, and I don't think like there would be pressure here if they were undefeated and everybody would say, "Well, can this can this happen? Can this happen?" I think the fact I think there was pressure to get to the Final Four, and I think they played a little bit tighter in every game up until the Xavier game in the NCAA tournament. And then in the Xavier game, uh, they were real. They were. They were back to being Gonzaga. They were back to being the number one team in the country. He was back to being, you know, the coach of the year, which he, which he has um, so deservingly won many of the awards. Um, I, I think that I think that because of the way they they've they've played all year, then I would lean to Gonzaga in that game because they've just played at a, at a superior level all year long. And I think what will help Gonzaga get the victory, you got to keep the bigs out of foul trouble. But for, right. from a fan aspect of it, and you can give me a little bit more from the coaching perspective, I'm curious to see, because everyone forgets Gonzaga is a very good defensive team because, you know, they're going up against South Carolina. That's a very good defensive team. I'm curious to see how Frank Martin game plans for those bigs because they've been tough to stop in this tourney, Coach. There, there's uh, size, physicality. That's what this tournament has been about to me, size and physicality. Gonzaga is, you know, they might be at one time. At one time, everyone might have said, "Oh, the West Coast is soft." This is not a soft team. This is a physically, uh, physically imposing group. And I agree with you. The bigs of Gonzaga will decide the game. I know you got to get to a meeting in just a second. As Phil Martelli joins us right now on the Zach Gelb show. I have to go to the women's games for a quick second just because of how much of a confidant you are of Gina Oriema going back to the days when you guys were on the same high school staff. I know you never thought that this guy could win 111 straight games and 108 of them be by double digits and 11 national championships and all that, but how did you know that this guy was going to be a great head coach? He, he had a gift for relating to, to uh, uh, players. So when he was the JV coach at, Cardinal, uh, at, at Bishop Kenrick, he just had this way of relating uh, that, not that I mimicked, but that I that I admired. And um, in terms of the basketball, it's a perfect the perfect situation occurred at UConn. UConn said to him, "We want to be the best program in the country," and his swagger, uh, ego, cockiness, if that's what people want to call it, he said, "Well, you know what? You got the right person, and I have the right staff." And you know, not only has Gino been here been there through that whole run but chris daly who's from jersey uh has been by his side and uh is it's extraordinary uh you know whether this will carry through or but it's, it sure will be interesting if they play with uh play against dawn staley on on sunday did you ever think of what it would be like to not lose a game for 866 days coach <laughs> I try to do that in seconds. I'd like to not lose a game in 866 <laughs> seconds and enjoy that. Right, last one for you, Coach, just because it's such a big topic right now. And uh, we see a lot of um, uh, assistant coaches in the NBA right now with what Greg Popovich has done uh, that are women coaches. How far away do you think we are from a female coach in the NBA? And do you think um, – how far away do you think that would be? And how do you think the players, are most importantly, respond to something like that? Uh, the pl- players in college and in the NBA re- respond to relationships and the fact that you're comfortable. And not that you're telling them all that they want to hear, but you're telling them what they need to hear. 
So I think that I think that it's a uh, possibility. Uh, I do not see it as a probability. I don't know that there's anybody out there enough, bold enough, and athletic directors or team owners to say, "Let me be the first. So I don't see it as as uh, I see it as a possibility, but not a probability. Could, and I think that's a fair point because you, there's going to be one team that's going to eventually be different and try it. Do you think Pop would eventually try to set that up whenever he retires to let Becky be that next person in waiting and recommend her? No, I actually think that Pop has this tree that includes Brett Brown. I think that he would turn to one of those guys that has been with them. Now, will he move her to the bench first? Yeah, he'll get her to the bench first. Let her do the summer league. Uh, but I don't see that uh, being something that Pop will take on. Well, Coach, we appreciate it. Make sure to get your sunscreen on out there, Wes. We don't want to get uh, you a little burn from the a little sun. Cloud, a little cloudy. Right <laughs> All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Thank you. Thanks for including me. Thank you. There's Phil Martelli joining us on the Zach Gelb Show. Fox Sports 920, the Jersey. That SOB. <laughs> Making me jealous as I look outside the Princeton Orthopedic Associate Studios. I think to myself, oh, great. In about 30 minutes, I got to drive home in this crap, this rain. Uh, the rain's the worst because people don't know how to drive in the rain. I mean, when it snows, people just don't go on the roads. When it rains, people get all crazy and think, oh, it's just rain. I could drive just the same way. And yesterday, I'm leaving the studio and I'm turning right, and this guy just comes zooming in at 100 miles an hour. And I had the right of way. I was, the guy was clearly far away from me, and I turn right. The next thing you know, he's beeping me down until I get on US-1. Just waved at him. Blew him a few kisses. That's what I do now. Whenever someone is a jerk and just slams on the horn for no reason, eh, I could lie a little bit. Sometimes I, I may flip him the bird. But usually I just sit there and blow kisses. That's what I do. It always aggravates people when they're all mad and you're just cool, calm, and collected. But the point about a woman coach in the NBA, it's a big conversation. And right now, here, here's what you see. that, And you saw it happen in New York with Mike Francesa when he made his comments. If anyone says, no, it's not going to happen, people are going to say, oh, you're chauvinistic. Oh, you're not for women getting opportunities. I think the way Phil put it is, yes, it could happen. Is it likely? No. I think that's fair. Now, what's happening in San Antonio would not shock me if Pop wants to really put his impact on the game even more than he already has as one of the greatest coaches ever and says, I want to be more innovative. And he tells San Antonio, and they don't have to listen. But they tell him, okay, maybe Pop will go upstairs in a few years and they'll have Becky coach the team. Is it possible? Yes. I'm all for it. But what team is going to be the first team to give that opportunity? And I remember we were talking to uh, Jen Walter uh, back at the Super Bowl two years ago. And we were talking about football. And I asked her, I said, how do the guys embrace you? Because that's how you always know. And that's always the thing that's said out there of, oh, well, you can't have a, a female be a coach because the guys won't embrace, them, embrace her. And she said, hey, those guys, they knew I knew what I was talking about and they respected me. And that's what it comes down to. If you could show and if you could get that opportunity that you know what you're talking about and that you could teach and that you could win, there will be an opportunity for it. I don't know how far away we are, and I don't know when it's going to happen. What team is going to be that team that gives a female an opportunity to be a head coach? Who's going to be the team? And for me... I think I'm all on board for it. I think it could work. But why haven't we seen it yet? How far away are we from seeing it? I think it's a conversation as we continue to look for change in this world that is going to continue to pick up momentum. And if you could show, hey, you could coach, and there's been some coaches that have been given that opportunity at the NBA level, well, if they're getting that experience. They're getting the same experience as a man's getting on an assistant, on a staff. When will it be that opportunity that one owner is going to say, 
oh, we're going to be different. We're going to be different than all the other teams. And we're going to start a movement. And we're going to make someone that is a woman a head coach. I don't know how far away we are from it. If I'm betting on it, does it happen within the next 10 years? If you ask me that, Zach, does it happen within the next 10 years? What, what would I say to that? Hmm. I'm going to say yes, it does. I believe it will happen in the next 10 years. I, I think it will. And we'll see. Eventually, there's going to be one owner that's going to say, okay, we're going to go this way. And you hope that coach has a lot of success because if that coach has success, then you know how it is. All these owners are copycat owners. All these owners, if one team does something that's a little bit different and it works, they think they could get it to work. And then they'll try to implement it with their team and with their organization. And then maybe you just need one. Once you get one team willing to do it, you may see a few more. But within the next 10 years, what happened? Yeah, I'll say so. In the NBA, yeah, I'll say so. 609-919-200. Now, if you ask me if it's going to happen in the NFL, I don't think so. If you ask me in the next 10 years, will there be a female head coach in the NFL? No, I don't think so. I, don't, I just don't think there will be. And I think the NBA is, is more likely to get a female head coach in, in the next 10 years. All right, we'll take a quick break. 535 is the time in the Princeton Orthopedic Associates studios. Open phone lines if you want to get on in. Talk about that conversation. Uh, will there be a female head coach in any of the uh, big sports here in America upcoming soon, and whether it's basketball or the NFL? But a lot of the conversation has been with the NBA. Uh, get in some NCAA tournament talk as well. You want to get in some baseball predictions, we'll do that. And uh, even if you want to talk some Eagles, and uh, we did talk about Joe Mixon to open up the show. So we'll take a quick break right now. 535 is the time. The Princeton Orthopedic Associates Studios we will be back. One more segment to play on Fox Sports 920 The Jersey and 920thejersey.com. 